It's my favourite time of the day. The GB News pub is indeed open. They haven't produced a Thatcher's cider for me. I'm very upset with my team. Someone's got to go, that's clear. But never mind. I'm joined. I'm going to welcome Matt Vickers, MP for Stockton South, two talking pints. Matt, very Cheers. good to see you. It's funny. When you get an election like 2019, there's so many new faces, new MPs in Westminster. It's, it actually takes quite a long time to sort of catch up with them all. We're different now, though. We used to all look the same, these MPs. Now I think there's different accents, there's different voices, there's different age brackets. So I think we're more memorable, hopefully. Yes, I mean, there are not quite as many of you that went to Eton and did PPE at Oxford. <laughs> but I think <laughs> that had become uh, quite dominant in the Conservative Party. Now, your seat, of course, had been won by a Conservative. Yeah. I think back in the 80s... We'd, we'd had one more. We'd and you had one. More recent. Yep, yep. 2015, I think, was it a guy called James Wharton. James Wharton, yeah. So, so your win wasn't perhaps as surprising as Deanna Davidson and some of the others that really... But still, you won it. Um, you took it back off Labour. Uh, you'd been in local politics before. So has it been, you know, has it been Matt Vickers since he was, you know, just about able to see over this desk? Has becoming an MP been the big life... Go. It, it wasn't, no, I don't think it was. I, I've done lots of bits and bobs before I got here. Um, I got, I was quite switched on to politics though, at a young age. Yep. I, you know, got involved, like to, to see what was going on in the world around me. Uh, I think the bit that really gets you going is if you become a local councillor, you see the little difference you can make to somebody's life, whether it be the pothole at the end of the street, the old lady who contacts you because the tree that's been overgrown, she's contacted the council for the last six months and nothing's doing anything. And when you do it and you go back and the smile on their face or the little difference that you can make to somebody is huge. Uh, and that's what fires you on to do it. It also again. cuts the other way, doesn't it? See, I think a lot of people watching this who've never been involved in local politics and never been councillors perhaps underestimate. It's actually blooming tough yep. being a councillor. Because what, I mean, what could matter more to people than their home, their environment, where they live, um, the condition of the pavements, the roads, where their kids are going to school? I mean, all of this stuff. And my observation, I think local councillors get more grief than MPs. When I say grief, I mean, you know, they can't walk to the local shop without a conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. and a debate taking place. I mean, no, local politics really matters. Um, it really matters. And I think perhaps we sort of slightly underplay just how much good work thousands of people yeah. right across the country do. But you, uh, obviously, being in politics, now, I know that... One of the issues that has sort of raised its head this week is Keir Starmer. Now, what on earth he was doing crossing the main road when well, he could have used the tunnel under, under Port Carlis House? I don't know. Bad judgment, perhaps. And obviously he's surrounded by that mob, and they were a bit unpleasant. I don't think they meant him any physical harm, but it was not very nice. Obviously the pretty shocking murder of David Amos, and we're taking this programme to South End in yep. a couple of weeks' time. Uh, and we'll obviously talk about that. And I, I went through a fair bit of this myself, but then, you know, I was anti-establishment, controversial, so perhaps it wasn't that surprising. It wasn't much fun. Yeah. But you were actually physically assaulted, weren't you? At, we did campus. during the election campaign. I think the reality of it is that actually we as politicians have some responsibility about the dialogue, about, you know, we, we talked about Angela Rayner and the whole scum comments, and it's, there's debate around issues, there's debate around people's record. And there's stuff that's just damn nasty. And actually, I think social media has a large part to play in this. I think we've got a chart on the wall now as to how long we haven't had somebody threaten me via Twitter or via the inbox or you worry about in the it? office. I think if you, if you let it bother, you would have a problem because it's so frequent. And you've got to think, you know what? These people are keyboard warriors. 99.9% of them. They're sat at home oh, in the back bedroom. Oh, they're all Victoria, and... all Victoria Cross winners after a glass of red wine. I mean, I mean, I mean no, that is true. But does, it, but does it bother you? I mean, you know, you've been attacked, assaulted out on the doorstep. Does it bother you when you're in the constituency I on think, a Friday or whatever? I think, do you know what, to some extent, you've got, you, we cannot, we cannot ever allow those people to prevent us doing our job, getting out there, seeing people, getting on the doorstep, speaking to people, holding those surgeries. The minute we let that happen, we've got a major problem uh, and we're letting them win. Uh, and moreover, the reason that people are doing it is to put us off what we're trying to achieve. I think part of the reason... You probably got as much stick as you did because mm. you were trying to achieve something that a few people didn't really want. In the um, end, the majority did. Yeah, uh, oh, but, oh yeah, no, a few sorry. very influential people didn't want. I mean, that's certainly true. No, I mean, look, I think you're right. Uh, we mustn't let them win. But I do think maybe there are arguments in certain situations for MPs to have 
a couple of bodyguards with them or whatever, because that doesn't separate you from the public. It, it could, in the right circumstance, actually make you feel more confident to go out and meet them. And I think that's perhaps the debate we're going to have as time goes on. I sort of joked earlier with you, teased you a little bit by saying, you know, you hadn't been to Eton or got a degree in PPE. And you probably don't quote Latin and Greek quotations or Milton or Shakespeare at dinner, um, as a lot of the posh Tory set do, and I'm sure you've seen it. But I need to ask you this, Matt, because there's, there's a big question right now. What is it to be a Conservative? What is this Conservative Party? Because I mean, let's be frank about it. You know, the punters in South Stockton didn't put you in there for a net zero policy that's going to make them put a... Depending on the size of their house, it's going to cost them, goodness knows, 10, 15 grand for a heat pump. Um, they're going to be forced into buying an electric car. Um, they certainly, because they'd be Brexiteers, of course, most of your voters, nearly all of your voters would be Brexiteers. Uh, they certainly didn't vote for weakness in Dover, illegal migration. I mean, there's so much happening. There was so much optimism, wasn't there? There was a. I felt that Brexit could usher in a new kind of politics. That was the big hope. Get our independence back, have a new kind of politics. And that maybe is the biggest problem. You know, party gate is a problem, I think. But the biggest problem is... Somehow it looks like the Tory party has gone back to being what it was. So what is it to be? Well, well let's, let's, go with, let's go with the net zero stuff first. Yeah. I think, do you know what? I don't think we can say green is good or green is bad. I think the minute we get into this, you know, we let the headline go, oh, isn't it terrible, this net zero thing? Actually, I think that we, we see there are benefits to doing certain green things, you know, whether that be in terms of our energy security, you know. Or whether it be in the job creation, which which in we're Teesside. not, which we're not doing. Yeah, in, in Teesside, uh, look, we look. are leading the green revolution. There's thousands of jobs. I don't think we should blindly go in at all costs to do green, to do zero come. But there is, we've got to look, look at each decision in, in its set. You can produce we've, green jobs in Teesside. But what you won't get back with this policy, uh, you won't get back aluminium smelting. You won't get back heavy engineering. You won't get back shipbuilding. You won't get back chemicals, refining. So, you know, we, we, we I mean, I mean, we, yeah, I mean yeah. we can argue this all round the if houses. We, if we demonise green energy, you know, if we demonise the green agenda completely and we say that actually... We're not about energy security and the opportunities that come with it. We're not about the job, job opportunities that come with it. We want to be at the front and the forefront of green technology. Uh, but we do need to do it in a balanced way. Like. Doing net zero at all costs is, is, is an absolutely ridiculous idea. I want, us to be so, I want us to be self-sufficient in energy. I think it's absolutely nuts that we're importing 50% of our natural gas when we could produce it here. I, insane that 9% of our electricity some days comes on an interconnector across the English Channel from France. I want those things. But what, what is it... the nuclear as the future? Anyway, what well, is it to be a Tory? Well, what is it to be a Conservative? To you, what is it to be a Conservative? I think, being a Conservative to me, the reason that I joined this party, I assessed uh, what was going on at a very young age, probably quite un uninformed at the time, seeing what went on, making a decision myself. My parents weren't massively into... But probably still aren't, to an extent, into party politics, even though we forced my mum onto the local council. <laughs> she loves it, though, <laughs> in the community. Um, but actually, I think it's about individual responsibility. It's about a, a party that's in government as he's on the side of people who do the right thing. If you work hard... You know, you look at the changes to welfare and the reform of welfare and universal credit, the fact that we've got a taper rate now. I remember when I used to manage shops... I had a girl who worked for me. She was fantastic. She was the most energetic, enthusiastic, capable, competent girl. She was a single mum. Uh, and in those days, under Blair, if you worked more than 16 hours, you were losing out. So by her doing that, she should have been managing the shop. Mm. She couldn't do any more than 16 hours. We cut off ambition. We cut off aspiration. We cut off opportunities. She should have been able to do those extra hours and take something extra home for her son. No, instead, and, and, no. And, and look, and I, I think many of these, uh, many of these uh, things that, that were thought through and worked on by Ian Duncan Smith, amongst mm. others, have been improvements. But you know, we've got a Tory party now that is big state. We've got a Tory party that has increasingly taken away individual choice and responsibility and said, we know what's best, we can do it for you. We're taxing and redistributing. We're not even taking 5% off, uh, you know, the VAT on, on, on our heating bills. And it just feels to me that the Tory party has, has become a social democrat, big government, high tax and spend party. And I wonder what it's for. I think, do you know what, it's a government of its time. It's a government that's dealing with completely unprecedented situation of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, it's done a damn good job in real terms. 
Do you understand? Because I obviously went and rebelled on various measures. Well, hang on. Hang on. But this this is hilarious, isn't it? You're sitting here defending the Tory party. You've been the biggest blooming rebel that's been in the whole of the 2019 intake. Do you know what? We expected to get to the end of this pandemic and we expected mass unemployment. Actually, we're in a really good place. We're coming at the fastest growing economy in the G7. Employment better off than when we went in, more people in work. Uh, We've avoided that, and we're in a good way. Uh, and the vaccine uh, rollout means the pubs are open, the shops are open. I'd be very, normal. very careful about those employment figures that the Prime Minister spouts again and again and again, because they take no account. That's PAYE numbers. Takes no account of the number of self-employed people that have packed up and gone out of business. In, and they're a big number. So, so In real terms, unemployment you know, is nowhere near. What we expected no, no, when no. we came out, the economy's in good shape because of the measures we put in to support the, to support the economy. But, you but moreover, actually, if, if we hadn't had that vaccine rollout now, hmm. we would still be walking around here with daft masks on doing all that malarkey, wouldn't we? This might be considered a party now. I, I don't well, I don't. on the table. Well, I'm not Prime Minister. I'm not making the rules. Partygate's not gone away, is it? It hasn't. It hasn't. And you know what? I, I, I shared the experience of having somebody who we lost couldn't visit them in hospital, couldn't attend a funeral. And I, and I understand the anger of people on that front. Um, you know, it's there. I've made, I've made my sounds to government about that issue. Um, at the same time, I was out there at the weekend. For all the anger that some people have about it, mm. the other people are angry about the fact that we spend most time on a television show like this or reading through the newspaper mm. talking about this thing when we've got issues in Russia and Ukraine, we've got issues with the cost of living, we've got issues... You know, they want to get on with but there's some an of issue, the big things. But there is an issue of trust... And Boris has been... Ah, his relationship with the truth is a very interesting debate, isn't it? Um, he, he has said things again and again and again that have proved to be wholly wrong. And I think what he's lost, and he'll have, have lost it with some of your constituents, is trust. And when you've lost trust, winning it back is hard. I mean, do you think he's going to stay? I think, do you know what I want to do? I, I, I think trial by media is a really bad thing. Um, angry about some of the things that have come out. But at the same time, I think it's right that we see what the Sue Gray report says in full. We see what the police say about it. Because actually, was it last weekend the media were having a debate as to whether there was or there wasn't a cake? Trial by media is a really bad thing. We see some... One thing I've learnt from this job mm. is never believe all of the things you read on social media or in a newspaper. Crikey, have you seen the stuff that gets printed in the mirror? You know... Let's oh, have... I've seen loads of it over the years. Let's see what the police say. Let's see what Sue Gray says. Let's make has... informed opinions about these things. And this could drag on for God knows how long. I, I, I agree. We want it moving. We want it moving now. We want to see that Sue Gray report in full and we want the police to investigate quickly. It's agony. It is agony. I mean, it's not good, is it? It's not good. And it hangs over government. It distracts and I do accept, everybody. I do accept your point that, you know, as this pandemic bore down upon us, I mean, this was a very difficult thing for government to deal with. And I get that. I understand that. But despite all of that, you know, there's a feeling that promises haven't been kept. Well, uh, well the big promise is levelling up, isn't it? It's delivering Brexit and levelling up. Those are the big promises. And what is levelling up? Is levelling up, is levelling up giving money to the North, which is what some Conservatives seem to think it is? Or is levelling up creating opportunities in the North? Which is it? Well, we give money to create opportunities for economic growth, to create... So in my part of the world, we have had... We've had all sorts... If you, I'll come to Stockton South, I'll, I'll get you a palm and I'll show you what levelling up is. We've got improvements to the local train station. We've got treasury jobs, jobs from the treasury that are being based in London, coming up to us. Not yep. only are they great, well-paid jobs, but actually it means we're moving decision-makers up there. We've got the first free port, the biggest, the UK's biggest free port. And you've got... Seaside, 18,000 jobs. And, and you've got Ben Houchen. Yep. Who has becoming the most prominent local politician in the Conservative movement in this country. And I have to tell you... I watched him the other day and I thought, yeah, I get that. I like that. I really understand what he's trying to do. He's firing on all cylinders. Because I think he understands the creation of opportunity. And yet, when I listen to Sunak and Gove, I feel it's almost like a Labour Party. Uh, you know, a Labour Party of 30, 40 years ago, who think just chuck some money here and there and it's all going to happen. Matt, what are your ambitions? What are my ambitions? Yeah. Uh, to be adapt. So I was born and raised in Stockton South. When I go out knocking on them doors... I'm knocking on people I went to school with. I get down the street and someone who I worked with. And they still vote for you. They, well, some of them do. <laughs> Not all, I don't think, but some of them do. Uh, and I think, do you know what? That job, to have that huge privilege <coughs> and honour is absolutely amazing. 
to be able to go back there yeah, and have they a all say that. They all say that. I, I believe you, honestly. Of course, I do. What are, you, what, are you, you know, what are your ambitions in politics? My ambitions is to deliver for the people of Stockton South. Oh, I've been yeah, there two don't, years. Don't give and me we're all leveling that. Up. I don't want all that, Tosh. Everyone says that. I, th- you know what? I think if you, if you think that everybody who goes in there wants to climb and do this, and do that, then you're wrong because actually some of us just want to do a damn good job of it. We've been given an enormous privilege and pleasure and honour. Hopefully, I'll be there long enough to do even more than I've already achieved, uh, but I'll be striving to do that. And if not, then I know I've done it. So whatever if, I could in my time. I was if climbing the greasy pole is not your ambition, what's the one big change you'd like to see in our country that you want to fight for? Uh, I go into schools every week, and they tell, we, we have a discussion about how we should change the law. They always suggest that we should, uh, we should change the law so that we have our desserts before we have our mains. Uh, <laughs> What I want to deliver, it's not, it's not national politics necessarily. There's lots of things I do want to change. We've, we've, I've had my impact on assaults on retail workers and those delivering uh, a service to the public. But actually, I think it's about delivering at home. It's about bringing things back up to the north, uh, doing that levelling up thing that we set out to do. We've already achieved that big Brexit thing, thanks to you know, lots, of well, people, lots of people. No, we, well, well, the Brexit thing leaves us free to do all sorts yep. of things. I'd love to see levelling up. I still don't fully understand what it means. Right, right. get yourself up to Stockton South. I'll show you it all. <laughs> I tell you what, I'll come and see Stockton South. Matt Vickers, thank you for joining me. <laughs> Cheers. On Talking Pints. Very good. Good to see you. Thank you.